Greetings to all. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is political parties and party systems. This, in this lecture, we shall attempt to discuss the meaning and the important functions of political parties. This lecture shall also elaborate on the nature of party system. This lecture shall also underline the significance of the need for comparative study of political parties and party system by looking at advantages as well as disadvantages of three important party systems namely one party system, two party system and multi party system. To begin with, let us first decode the concept of political parties. What do we mean by political parties? Now, whenever we talk about, whenever anyone deliberates on democratic apparatus, democratic framework, political parties have an important position. Political parties, therefore, are an important feature of a democratic setup. They are an important organ of a democratic apparatus. Political parties play a very important role and quite often their functions reflect the significant issues concerning any polity, significant issues for any society. As we could take the learning forward, let us now understand the concept of political party by looking at certain important definition. An important definition that we got for the term political party from aceproject.org while we were doing the research and we presented before it before you all. A political party is defined as an organized group of people with at least roughly similar political aims and opinions that seek to influence public policy by getting its candidates elected to public office. Now, in this definition, it is very clear that the need to have an organization, an organization that is a group of people and they should have certain similar ends, namely similar political aims and opinions and this should be directed towards an important aspect, namely influencing public policy and what is the mechanisms? Election that is by getting candidates elected to public office. Taking the learning forward, Sartori, the political scientist presented a very important definition of the concept of political party. Let us read that. According to Sartori, a political party is defined as a political group that is officially recognized as being part of the electoral process and who can support put forth candidates for elections free or not on a regular basis. Now, this definition by Sartori gives us insight into the important role political parties perform with respect to electoral process and most important looking at the electoral process on a regular basis. Another important definition of the concept of political party that we got while we were doing the research for the lecture that is from senate.gov that is a political party is made up of individuals who organize to win elections, operate government and influence public policy. So, this shows us that the very act of participating in the elections, the very aspect of helping to operate the government, influencing public policy are certain areas wherein a political party plays an important role. Edmund Burke the great philosopher defined political party that is as a body of men united for promoting by their joint endeavors the national interest upon some particular principle in which they are all 
agreed quoting further from the work of edmund burke that is he descri described politician as philosopher in action who attempted to implement a principle by enacting party programs so therefore based on this various perspectives that we read from the perspective given by sartori to the definition by edmund burke we now try to get some important points from these perspective to the next aspect of our lecture that is what are the functions of political parties political parties therefore based on all the definitions that we have just read we get the sense that they provide important links between individuals state and societies further political parties provide the very crucial connection between social process and policy makers and political parties influence debates and policies on issues affecting the interest of various social groups in a political system taking the learning forward the next aspect that we'll debate is party system the party system that emerges from the working of political parties party system can be looked upon when we try to decode this concept that is it is based on the number of parties present in political systems therefore party systems generally can be categorized as single party system two party system or multi party system therefore it is very essential to note here that presence of more than one party is often looked upon as a feature of a democratic and plural society taking the learning forward it very it is very important to distinguish here that we all know that there are various types of groups in a society there are pressure groups interest groups non party civil society organization how do we differentiate between a political party and the other groups like pressure groups interest group or non party civil society organization so therefore it is essential to point out here that the principal feature of a political party which distinguishes it from other organizations that is its main purpose is to capture power and this is what it is pointed out that unlike a political party when we look at pressure groups interest group or non party civil society organization they generally do not seek power now this is not again a general feature but yet a very important general observation that it made is made that when we try to differentiate political party from other social oriented groups the very idea of capturing power seeking power is what distinguishes a political party from other pressure groups interest group or non party civil society organizations further when we try to talk about political parties and its related aspect of party system typology is an important aspect now it is why it is important to understand the typology of party systems it is important to understand the study it is important to know the classification of political party systems it is important to gather important inputs from the typology now to understand the typology of party systems we take reference to the work of giovanni sartori that is a typology of party systems that is it provide it provides us with two specific rules for determining the relevance of a particular party now what are they let's understand the first rule argues that and we quote a minor party can be discounted as irrelevant whenever it remains over time superfluous in the sense that it is never needed or put to use for any feasible coalition majority so the argument that is important to understand while understanding the first rule that is parties should not be counted for classification purpose if 
it fails to depict or exhibit coalitional potential. In the same line, when we are talking about Giovanni Sartori, Sartori's a typology of party system, the next rule here is the second rule that argues that a party qualifies for relevance whenever its existence or appearance affects the tactics of party competition and particularly when it alters direction of the competition. So, the argument that is important to understand here is that a party is not counted for classification unless it demonstrates its blackmailing potential. So, as we are talking about the typologies, another important typology has been presented by Alan Ware. Alan Ware in the work Political Parties and Party System. Alan Ware provides an approach that classifies systems based on relative size of the parties. So, let us understand that using the percentage of legislative seats at criteria, Alan Ware outlines four types of party systems. First, two and a half party system. Second, systems with one large party and several much smaller ones. Third, systems with two larger parties and several much smaller ones. And last, even multi-party systems. So, therefore, in this approach as we read through it, it assumes that behavior of a, polit of a party system is likely to be influenced by size of a party's opponents in relation to its own size. Another important typology that we get that is from the reading from the work of Robert Dahls, party system and patterns of opposition. Now, in this work, here they, one can read that there is an effort to combine the issues of number of important parties and internal unity of party. So, in this aspect, Robert Dahl offers four categories. Let us understand that. Two party system with a high degree of internal party unity. Second, two party systems with relatively low internal party unity. Third, multi-party systems with relatively high internal party unity. And fourth one, multi-party systems with low internal party unity. With this, we now come to a very the important aspect of our lecture that is we look at three distinct typologies of party system, one party system, two party system and multi party system. Now, when we talk about one party system often called as single party system, that is it is ruled by one party. In this situation, quite often there is no opposition. This authoritarian principle, it is often said that when we try to look at the typology, it, is, it was found in monarchies, later in dictatorships and quite often critics point out that this system exists in a few democratic countries too. When we try to understand the advantages and disadvantages of one party system, we take reference to this work by Margaret Moniani. One party state, is it good or bad for governance? Read at e-ir.info and herein with a specific case study of African states, we take reference for some important inputs. Margaret Moniani points out that activities of the opposition when we try to understand one party state, it may be completely outlawed. There may be chances of opposition to clinch power which have been thwarted. The work gives reference to the work of Rengske and Nijinx that is one party state could operate in an authoritarian context 
or even in some cases in multi party framework setup further the work of margaret moniani points out that one party system was a characteristics of many african states and particularly seen in the context of decolonization and rise of many african states as independent states so in this context of newly gained independence the work points out taking reference to some important academic perspective from widner and others that democracy was then considered as alien to the continent and herein some argued that democracy or its related aspect of multi party regimes was divisive and hence not good or unfit for the newly independent african states which needed a unified energy and enthusiasm so as to move forward when we try to talk about one party system the when the critical aspect of that wherein lot of academicians and policy analysts have pointed out that in this system ruled by single party the governance is marked by system totalitarian that often curtails democratic rights next moving on we'll talk about two party system now the two party system by its very name is one where there are two parties despite the presence of other parties they have substantial support of the electorate so therefore one party will be the ruling party another opposition and it depends on which party gets the majority in elections when we talk about two party system in politics it is essential to point out that it creates a structure where the electorate gives significant majority of its votes to only two major parties that means one or the other can win majority in the legislature now what are the advantages of two party system it is often point out that it promotes centrism it encourages political parties to find common positions then often that it can lead to political stability which is very essential for economic growth and that a two party system it is pointed out it encourages the government to offer majority representation and that it allows more ideas to turn into legislation now with these advantages of two party system there are certain disadvantages also let us understand the disadvantages what could be the disadvantages of two party system that is it may create inconsistent governing patterns for any country further the very idea that how two party system puts multiple ideas multiple factions underneath one general umbrella is often looked upon as a disadvantage of the two party system with this we come towards the next typology that is multi party system what do we mean by multi party system multi party system indicates existence of several parties in a political system in the same light in a multi party system it is pointed out that several parties come together to form a coalition government and adopt common minimum program for governance the multi party system is of two types what are they first unstable second working the unstable party system that is the system that does not provide stability the working multi party system behaves like a two party system and therefore thereby tends to provide stability to the government even though they have more than two major political parties now what are the advantages of the multi party system the multi party system it is pointed out in various works and studies that it enhances electoral transparency 
Further, it is also pointed out that a multi-party system is more responsive and accountable to the needs of the people. It is also argued that multi-party system is good for a vast and socially diverse polity. Then it is also pointed out that a multi-party system gives space to varieties of interests and opinions to enjoy political representation. People can make a choice between several candidates. With this, let us look at the demerits of multi-party system that is it is often pointed out that no one party is likely to gain power alone. Further, one cannot ignore that there may be difficulties in the formation of government because of presence of too many parties and opinions. To take the learning forward, we take reference now to the work of R. N. Lippard from the book Patterns of Democracy with a very important chapter from there that is Party Systems, Two-Party and Multi-Party Patterns. Let us understand what does this work by R. N. Lichpart, Patterns of Democracy, published by Yale University Press and we will we'll take a specific look at the chapter that is the title Party Systems, Two-Party and Multi-Party Patterns. R. N. Lichpart points out in this chapter that two-party systems typify the majoritarian model of democracy. And multi-party systems, the consensus model. Further, he point up, R. N. Lippard points out that the traditional literature on party systems, when, when he looks at, that is, he points out that it is staunchly majoritarian and emphatically favors the two-party system. R. N. Lippard further points out that two-party systems are claimed to have both direct and indirect advantages over multi-party systems. The first direct benefit is that they offer the voters a clear choice between two alternative sets of public policies. Further, Aaron Lippard quotes the work from the work of A. Lawrence Lowell that is as a first modern political scientist who wrote that legislature must contain two parties and that two parties only in order that the parliamentary form of government should permanently produce good results. He also points out that there is a quoting from the work of Lowell that axiom in politics that coalition cabinets are short lived and weak compared with one party cabinets. That is, quoting from the chapter, the larger the number of discordant groups that form the majority, the harder the task of pleasing them all and the more feeble and unstable the position of the cabinet. R. N. Lippard points out that majoritarian preference for two-party system therefore is clearly and logically linked to their preference for powerful and dominant one-party cabinets. He presents the argument when we look at some of the important arguments that he presents in the work that is the argument of strong connection between party systems and electoral system which further explains the majoritarian strong preference for plurality instead of proportional representation because of its bias in favor of larger parties and its contribution to the establishment and maintenance of two party systems. So, therefore, we must look at this work of R. N. Lippard, party systems, two party and multi party patterns is very important chapter to gain some very important comparative insights with respect to the parties and party system. Dear learners, 
we hope that the lecture on political parties and party systems presented to you significant inputs with reference to the nature and importance of political parties looking at the comparative study of party system namely looking at advantages and disadvantages of one party system two party system and multi party system we look forward to positive encouraging feedback from you all for the lecture thank you very much